Welcome to the Eric Avisar Show. As good as Duke and UNC was, it turns out it was nothing but just a nice appetizer for the feast of delightful college basketball that was played between UCLA and Oregon at the Pauley Pavilion. And the pavilion was a rockin' the hottest ticket there in years as UCLA came back from a 19-point deficit as the 10th ranked Bruins beat the 5th ranked Oregon Ducks 82-79. Just a fantastic game where Oregon completely dominated early on, particularly with some uh, white-hot outside shooting from Dylan Brooks, who finished with uh, 19 points, tied for a game high with uh, Tyler Dorsey, both of whom played extremely well. I was very impressed with both of them. Uh, the same can be said for uh, Pritchard, you know, along with uh, Ennis. You know, those guys uh, in the backcourt really getting things done. You know, they combined for 21 points of their own. But look, the Bruins had five guys finishing double figures. And as quiet as uh, Lonzo Ball was in the first half, he was an absolute Lonzo Baller superstar extraordinaire in the second. That cold-blooded three he hit from 30 feet out with just over 30 seconds left to give the Bruins a two-possession lead. You could just feel the dagger pierce through the ducks once that shot went down. My goodness, just a player with no conscience. The thing about Ball is, you know, he doesn't care what he has to do as long as he's helping his team win. You know, he didn't really have to score in the first half because that wasn't what the focus was necessarily. I'm sure he would have liked to have scored more, but he knew what he had to do. Casey Benson, to his credit, did a great job of keeping the ball out of Lonzo Ball's hands in the first half, uh, but Ball was not to be denied. You know, had his fourth double-double of the season, you know, had 10 rebounds, and, you know, he just gets it done, like I said, no matter what it takes, you know. He probably has the most uh, complete skill set of any point guard in college basketball. And might not be the most talented in terms of raw athletic ability, but between the passing, the ball handling, the outside shooting, the rebounding, and just the all-around utilization uh, he brings to his team is really, really uh, tough to beat. And I think he's a huge reason why the Bruins have a serious shot at winning the national title. They can overcome Steve Alford's shortcomings, in part two, because Steve Alford's son, Bryce Alford, is a terrific shooter. Usually the coach's kid, not so good, at least... Uh, you know, oftentimes they're a walk-on, but boy, Bryce Alford has no business being a walk-on. He uh, really shot well tonight, went uh, 3 of 7 from uh, 3, and uh, finished with 12 points, as did Thomas Welsh, the highly skilled center. Uh, you know, Isaac Hamilton had 11 of his own. And then, you know, to top it all off, uh, Aaron Holiday chipped in 15 off the bench. And uh, Ike Anigbogu... Uh, had seven rebounds and nine points off the bench as well. His presence was really felt down low. So, you know, the Bruins are strong in the backcourt and in the front court, uh, like very few teams are in college basketball. So, you know, the Ducks, they really have to figure out what went wrong here. I think it was more of a UCLA comeback uh, than a choke job in this one. And you really have to give credit to the Pauley Pavilion crowd for really pushing and willing the Bruins to victory. It is so hard to win on the road in college basketball when you're talking about these young players. But, uh, you know, to the Bruins' credit, they stayed the course, they stayed resilient. The Ducks had a double-digit lead throughout much of the second half, not just the first. And, you know, they really uh, did what they had to do to pull it out. So one of the best games in the college basketball season I've seen so far. Uh, final score, UCLA, 82, Oregon, 79. And thank you so much for tuning into my show, and please be sure to subscribe to my channel.